Hello everyone, it's Ben Frenzy, and today I am going to talk about the LEGO Star Wars 2021 reveals that we have so far. And most of the rumored sets that we have heard of have been officially revealed, with a few exceptions. Luckily, these sets have been received surprisingly well. At first, they were hated. I was one of very few people who actually liked the sets, and... Now, people are actually liking them. These sets were even received well by the bigger YouTubers. Ash and Flash really liked them, Just Too Good liked them. Even Emendar, who has hated these sets from the beginning, and has fueled and most likely even sparked the hate for all of these sets, has admitted that these sets aren't as bad as he said they are. I hate to say this. I absolutely hate to say it. It looks good on the box art. It, it just does. I think they look surprisingly good, certainly for the price, but obviously downsizes from previous models. So in that aspect, not so great, but it is what it is. To be honest, I don't think I would have ever imagined Emendar ever saying such a thing about these 2021 sets. Anyways, let's go through all of the ones that have been revealed. Let's start with set number 75295, aka the Millennium Falcon Microfighter. The set I actually don't like from this wave. This set is going to be 101 pieces for $10, so the price is not bad. I'm not even mad about this being the third Millennium Falcon Microfighter, even though to me it honestly looks kind of the same as the others. I mean, this microfighter is back on shelves for the same reason as the X-Wing and TIE Fighter. It's a cheap build of an iconic vehicle that needs to be recontinued because it is such a popular and iconic ship. The thing I don't like about this set is the reuse of the traditional Han Solo minifigure. This figure was rumored to be a Hoth version of Han Solo. Obviously, rumors are not always true, but... A Hoth Han Solo would have been much preferred over the traditional Han Solo that a lot of people have already in their collection. Although it makes sense to have the traditional Han Solo in the set rather than a Hoth variant, this set is targeted towards younger kids who wouldn't care really which Han Solo figure they got. As for the older fans of LEGO, they would have definitely been attracted to this set if this had a more exclusive variant of Han Solo. What's definitely the most popular set in this wave is the Trouble on Tatooine set since instead of being from the original trilogy, it is from The Mandalorian. Set number 75299 is going to retail for $30 with 276 pieces, so that's not bad at all. The minifigures in the set are really good. One of them is the Mandalorian in his best car armor, so that is awesome. Plus a Tusken Raider, which is a nice minifigure, even if you already have one of them. And then Baby Yoda, who's not really a minifigure, but he's there in a cheap set. I actually haven't seen season two of the Mandalorian yet. My family's planning on just like watching a bunch of the episodes during winter break at the end of December. But this set does look cool. Would have been nice to have one more Tusken Raider since this set technically only has two minifigures. Even though there could have been one more Tusken Raider, at least this set does not rip you off on minifigures like the Razor Crest did. To be honest, I don't really care too much for any of the builds in this set, but none of them are bad. Do kind of like the speeder bike and the campfire um, build thing, but... It's not the greatest thing ever, but definitely not bad either. Set number 75300, the Imperial TIE Fighter, is a set I am really happy with. It is 432 pieces and $40. Comparing this to this year's Sith TIE Fighter set, this is amazing. This is almost the same piece count as that set for half the price. Uh, obviously, the... Sith TIE Fighter used bigger pieces, but this is still really, really good. The three minifigures in this set are not bad at all. The two obvious ones were the TIE Fighter Pilot and the Stormtrooper. The third one was much more unpredictable, and that was the NIL-8 Protocol Droid. The Protocol Droid is a nice figure. There is one like it. I think it's a bit different 
in the UCS Death Star set, and I have that, and it looks r really good. So I'm looking forward to getting another similar type. Even being downsized, this TIE Fighter still looks really good, and I'm looking forward to getting it. Since the only TIE Fighter I have is Vader's TIE Advance from the Death Star set, this is actually going to be an upgrade TIE Fighter for me, so that's pretty cool. Luke Skywalker's X-Wing Fighter or set number 75301 also looks really good. It is 474 pieces and is going to be $50 when it comes out. The figures in this set are also really good, being an X-Wing Pilot Luke, R2-D2, which were the obvious ones, Leia, which is the Tantif IV variant, which is a really nice addition, and then for the first time ever in LEGO Star Wars, we got General Dodonna, which is a nice addition. This set is pretty nice, but though, one thing that concerns me is that I'm seeing a lot of stickers on this set, so... This is definitely going to be a painful build if you take as much time doing stickers as I do, but at the end, it will look really good. It would have been nice to have a generic Rebel in this set as well, though for this being only $50 with four minifigures, I really can't complain about that. This set is definitely going to be good for not just play, but display also. I mean, it's not the best displayable set, obviously, but... I mean, it's not going to be a bad one either, so glad that LEGO has that sort of balance in this set. And these are all of the sets that we have seen official images of for LEGO Star Wars next year. Sadly, we have not seen the Imperial Shuttle or whatever the first UCS set of 2021 will be, as well as the 4 Plus Resistance X-Wing, but... I don't really think most people care about that one. As for the sets we have seen, they all look really good. The one I don't like is the Microfighter. I've never cared for Microfighters. The only reason I would buy one is for a special minifigure, which this set obviously did not have. I think the compromises LEGO made were really good choices on their part. The late 2020 Star Wars wave is much better than this one. It is important to remember, though, that the early waves every year for not just Star Wars, but for superheroes and Mario and all of that stuff are going to have weaker waves than later in the year. However, this wave has done some stuff much better than the fall 2020 wave, which are that the prices are actually good. None of these sets are overpriced at all. And none of these sets are lacking in minifigures, unlike our current wave, which has a lot of lacking minifigure sets with high prices. I actually made a rant covering this topic, so if you want to see that, I'll put it in the description. Don't forget to comment on your thoughts on these sets and to subscribe. Currently, I am at over 100 subscribers, so I will make that 100 subscriber milestone video hopefully this week so definitely subscribe so we can get to 200 and with all of that out of the way thanks to all of you for watching remember to wash your hands have a great day and happy thanksgiving